So welcome to the Virtual Cheese Wars 2022 showcase in the best of British cheese. I'm Helen Blair from Good Sense Research and we'll be moderating the session today. Today we'll be judging um, the category F7, which is goat's milk soft cheese. I'd now I'd like to introduce you to Ruth. Ruth, do you want to say a few words? Thanks, Helen. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to be judging the Virtual Cheese Awards again. Um, and I am the retail manager at the Newton Somerset. So I manage the farm shop and the house and garden shop here in the beautiful grounds. Uh, before that, I was head of wholesale for Paxton and Whitfield uh, based in London. So very excited to be in Somerset now and judging all these lovely cheeses. So Ruth will be um, using a point system for the scoring that's based on five different attributes and the winner will be the cheese with the most points and will go forward to the best of the category stages. So the first cheese that we have is so the category, sorry, the attributes that we score on are appearance, aroma, texture, flavour, and then how true the cheese is to character. So the first cheese is F71039. Okay, so I can feel that this cheese is very, very soft. So it's this, um, actually, it's quite, quite big, um, size, sort of Columbia, Columbia size, can it be? Um, and yeah, it's really, really soft. It's well in date and it has been kept chilled, but it's like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a, a melter. So the rind is, the rind is, is nice looking. Um, there's a fair amount of um, mold ripening on it, but I can feel, like I said, I can feel like it's very squishy. So when I cut it open, the rind is quite, is a little bit thick and the cheese itself is running away a bit. Um, so appearance wise, or rather, I suppose it's texture wise really more, um, texture, some, I mean, God, some people would absolutely love this, but I know as a cheesemonger, um, or if you're a chef or anything like this, it's quite, it can be quite hard to work with a cheese like this because you can't leave it out, you can't cut it very well. Um, so texture, I'm gonna go um, six. Um, appearance, it is, a, it's, it is actually very nice, um, but the cheese is running away a bit when I open it. So uh, let's say seven. Um, I'll just take, God, it, it is really, really soft. So I should have got some crackers. Oh. You'd think it might smell ammoniac being this right, but it doesn't at all. Hmm. So it's very nice. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's not overripe, despite all the appearances to the contrary. You're definitely getting some farmyard off it but not in a bad way. It's kind of farm gate rather than, you know, silage. Um, Flavour-wise, it's really pleasantly goaty. It's not overly goaty at all. It's not soapy. Like I say, it's not ammoniac. Um, I reckon if it had another couple of days on it, it would be pretty punchy. Um, and I guess that's a bit surprising given that there's still quite a long date on it. It's the 23rd of May. So there's, there's, if you were to take this cheese to the 23rd of May, I think it would be incredibly, uh, you know, past it in my opinion. Um, but flavour wise, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's lovely and creamy texturally and, and flavour. Um, so let's say eight for flavour. Um, Aroma, did I do aroma? No, what about, yeah, what about aroma? Yeah, it's, it's lovely actually, quite grassy. Say eight for aroma. Okay. And then and true to character. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's quite an unusual cheese because it's so big for a goat's cheese. And perhaps this is why people don't, don't make them this size. I'm going to try to try and pick it up now. And it's, you know, it's quite floppy. Um, I'd say six, I think. And then on to the next one. So I've got F71079. One zero, yeah. Just 
I'll do this off a bit. One zero seven nine. Yeah. Right. Like, messy one. Okay. This is a, a bouche, a log. Um, a bit more of a traditional shape. This is a lot firmer. Um, oh, geez. Okay, well wrapped. It's a traveling. So, quite a generous log. Um, lovely in white and velvety around the outside. Uh, it's evenly ashed. It's evenly molded. It's a good shape. Um, yeah, it's lovely. Really, really pretty. Um, it was really well wrapped, you know. So appearance 10. Not much aroma on the rind. Let's have a little look. Yeah, it's got such a lovely sort of fruity, citrusy smell. Uh, hold it up so you can see, it's like really ivory. The breakdown is like so consistent. It's so kind of, it's not gooey around the edge. It's just a little bit more creamy around the edge. You just see the vegetable ash around the edge as well there. Um, it's cutting really well, easy to portion for chefs and cheesemongers and if you're at home. Aroma. Yeah, I think that's, it's, it is quite subtle. And it's been, they've all been out for a couple of hours warming up. I'm gonna say six for aroma. Texture is excellent. Um, eight for texture. Mm. There is just so much going on with that. That is such an amazing cheese to pair with things. It would be amazing with sparkling wine, with perry, with you know, a fine a fine cider, a dry white, Pinot Noir. It just it's so sort of lively and yeah, summery, I guess, springy summery. Yeah, I really like that. Flavour, I'd say 10. True to character, yeah, I think it's really true to character. Um, I guess maybe you'd want it a touch softer. I, mean, I quite like it like that, but I'd say nine. Great, and then the next one is F71119. Okay, so we've got another log. Oh, no, that's not, sorry, that's the wrong one. One, 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 nine, that one. A little button. This one feels a bit softer. Ooh. So this one is a little bit, so there it is. So it's drier on that side and a bit wetter on that side. Um, I would say it's not looking absolutely peak perfect. Um, so probably, well, let's have a look inside. The rind, the rind smells amazing. Again, you might expect if the cheese is that ripe to smell like it's kind of, over the hill, but it absolutely doesn't. Oh God, that smells really good as well. That. Really kind of straw-like, like dry grass. Yeah, and texturally, it's got breakdown down the edge, around the edge and, and quite firm in the middle. Um, let's just try it. It's gone, it's gone fairly goo again like the other one, but not as bad. Mm. Mm. 
Mm, yeah, that's really good. That is what I was hoping for, which is that the slightly drier rind is kind of a little bit chewy. Um, it's really, really nice, really well balanced. I could even do like a shade more salt in it, but I but that's just me. Um, it's definitely because it's one of the smaller cheeses that is here, and they and like I said, they have been out a while. It's definitely going gooey, but it's amazing. Love it. Okay, so did I do appearance yet? You haven't done the scores for any of them yet. Okay, appearance eight, aroma. Eight, texture nine, flavor 10, true to character 10. This is, it's quite an unusual British goat's milk cheese, that, that sort of style and size. There's not many around like that, so. Um, yeah, more in a sort of French style. Yeah, and the next one we've got is F. 71199. Oh, okay. This is the other log. It's quite a messy category. Yes. Right, so. Ooh. So this is another white rinded log. Um, it's not as velvety as the other ones. You can see side by side. One is more velvety and one is a bit more sort of open textured but it's traveled really well it's very evenly rounded perhaps a slightly less aged than the other one um yeah it looks looks really good um smell yeah it doesn't it smells slightly sulfury Okay, so inside it's cut a little bit unevenly actually. There's a bit um, sort of come out of there when I've just done that. Smells really fresh, um, really fresh and clean. It's a, it's slightly younger, I think, than the other ones. It's it's still a little bit sort of not chalky is the wrong word. Um, just sort of fresh and moussey. It's a little bit more, yeah, it's, it's a little bit slightly pappy and a bit sort of claggy in the mouth. Um, nothing that can't be sorted out with some chutney. Um, but yeah, it's just a little bit claggy, a bit younger. That said, there's a lovely sort of clotted cream quality about it. You see it's just slightly more open textured in the middle. Um, yeah, a bit just slightly sort of yogurty aroma. Um, so I'd say appearance is nice. Um, eight. Um, tractor. Um, aroma is a little bit is a little bit uninspiring. It's not unpleasant. But six. Texture again is just. It's really pleasant, but it's not sort of blow you away. I, I'm going to say seven. And flavour. Yeah, six, probably, perhaps a bit undersalted. Um, true to character, yeah, true to character, eight. And the next one I've got is F71200. Yep. So it's another log. This one is ashed. It's quite wet. So we can see where it's sort of caught on the paper. It's like a bit 
squidgy. Um, so it, it, ha it does, it looks so young that the rind wasn't formed properly. Um, yeah, which is affecting then when I pick it up, my fingers go through it. Yeah, I mean, it, it smells, I think, similar sort of age to the one I've just tried. I'm just getting that same sort of, you know, yogurty lactic flavour, um, aroma, sorry, that's very pleasant, but it's not, not particularly exciting. Hmm. It's actually, Mm. Flavour wise, it's actually, it's actually really good. Um, I think it's a bit more salty than the other one. Perhaps that's the, the, the ash coming through. But yeah, unfortunately, it's just not got quite enough age on it to hold together. Or so the, and it's sort of sweated in the packet, so it's just coming apart a bit. Um, so I'm going to say appearance six, aroma six, texture seven, flavor eight, true to character. Well, it's not really doing that sort of ashed goat's log real full justice, I don't think so. Um, let's say six for that. And the next one's F71201. F71201. So yeah. Okay. This is a different shape. More of a, I don't know what you call that really, big button. Um, <laughs> so that is ashed again. Um, but it's drier this time. It's held together much better. Perhaps it's got a bit more age on it. This one has got a line through the middle, line of ash, I assume. Um, sorry, there's more lorries. Um, yeah, it looks really good, held together really well. Um, aroma. Yeah, same, just fresh yogurty. Lactic smell. It's cutting quite well. It has just come apart a bit again. So I don't know. Quite interesting though with the rind, with the um, ash through the middle. Looks really fun and unusual. Yeah, that that's held together a bit better. Let's give it a taste. Hmm. Yeah, lovely clean flavour. Again, quite young. Um, there's not much sort of breakdown there, but the but the cheese has got a lovely moussey quality to it, um, and I think is a bit more, perhaps a bit more exciting than the previous two vlogs. Um, I think appearance is really pretty. Say nine for appearance. It's held together really well. Aroma is a little bit one dimensional. I'm going to say six. Texture is excellent um, with a, just a little bit of breakage in the curd there. So say seven. Flavor is, is very pleasant. Again, it's not like multi layered. Um, it's just quite fresh and delicious. So seven. And true to character, well, it's quite an unusual cheese. Um, so that's kind of hard to say, but <clears throat> I really like what they've what they've done. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, so say nine for that. <coughs> Sorry, what was the taste score? I think I said eight. Okay. And the next one's F71202. <clears throat> right. Well, this looks familiar. 
This must be the other one's cousin, I think. So again, it's a big, big button held together really well. I wonder what this one will have inside, if anything. Oh, it's got like a row of um, truffle. Truffle. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So it looks like uh, a very thin layer of truffle paste and that's been put into the middle. Again, it's cut well, it's holding well. I'm going to just try a bit with the truffle in. It's a little, a little bit dry. Um, I don't know whether the goat's cheese has got enough kind of fat in it to <clears throat> keep that truffle really moist. Um, that said, it's a really interesting idea, <coughs> which I think is is executed well. Um, but yeah, for my for my, I just it's just a little bit hard work. Then I have just nailed about 15 cheeses all in a row so um but yeah it this truffle smell is really um you can tell obviously instantly it's truffle but it's not over overpowering it's quite subtle so let's say appearance is really pretty yeah um you could definitely you'd be very happy if you had that on a cheese board say so nine for appearance aroma eight for aroma texture i'm finding a little bit dry I'm going to go six for texture, flavour. Let me just try a bit with actual four. Um, yeah, I mean they're good. They're just not. They're just not got much age on them. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to go seven for flavour. And true to character. I like the idea. I think it's really clever. I think it's really fun. So I'm going to go nine for true to character. And then the final one in this class is F71203. So it's another log. It's like a sort of hybrid between the two I had before. A little bit of paper stuck to it. I'm just peeling off the paper. So it does happen. Um, appearance wise, yeah, it's pretty. <clears throat> you can tell it's mold ripened, but there's it's also been ashed, so um, which is which is really pretty. Um, it's held together well, it's not too wet, despite some of the paper sticking to it. It's quite quite fat, quite a fatty for a log. Um, I'm definitely getting more of the rind smell than the paste smell. Those people who smell a lot of cheese rinds will know what that that mold ripened rind smells like. Um, it's also just around the edge kind of just kind of pulled away from the edge a bit. I don't know. Slice it again. Yeah, it's just they've all got this slight sort of gappy curd structure where there's sort of holes. It's not unattractive, but I, I'm I'm just it just sort of a bit like um, a glacier with chasms in it. You know, it's just sort of falling apart a bit. Anyway. Um, Let's see how it, yeah, it's just not cutting very well. Bits coming out of it. Um, just gonna eat another bit. I think I, my knife was a bit truffly. There's also. Yes, yeah, no, I don't know. It's 
Mm, I think I'm going to have to mark it down for texture because there's bits and bobs falling out of it and, and I'm finding bits and things in it. So appearance, appearance is, is nice on the outside. On the inside, it's a bit cracky. Um, so I'm going to say six. Aroma is definitely more rind than interior. Six. Texture is not quite right for my money. It, yeah, there's another hole there and there's another kind of crack there. So I'm going to say four for texture. Flavour is, is okay. Um, but it's not sort of sitting together, not really hanging together as a whole. So flavour five, true to character four. Um, what, sorry, what did you say for appearance and aroma? Oh, appearance, what did I say? Uh, I think I said six. An aroma, let's say five for aroma. Okay. So that's the final one from this one. And that makes the winner F71119. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good because I'm glad it was that one because that was my favourite. So that one, that one by over two points and then the runner-up was f71079 yeah yeah both excellent some really good cheeses in that category so, um, thank you very much for judging um with the live event is um on friday the 13th of may and that's judging the best of, of the classes in the categories best english irish welsh welsh and scottish cheeses along with the awards that recognise the talented and passionate people in the industry. Today will culminate with the award of our Supreme Champion for 2020. We'd also like to thank our sponsors um, for the Judges Pack, South Carnarvon Creameries and Butler's Farmhouse Cheeses for our aprons. Many thanks.